it's really a big deal for mankind. And by mankind, that includes the entire human species. And the fact that that statement had to be inserted is a precursor to the idiocracy that befell the James Webb Space Telescope image reveal at the White House. The achievement is an extraordinary mark on modern history. The reveal should have been a bastion to the US via NASA, the EU via European Space Agency, ESA, as well as the Canadian Space Agency, CSA. Instead, what we got was a bumbling, buffoonish broadcast. Here's why the James Webb Space Telescope reveal was a total embarrassment. We finally have it, our highest resolution infrared image of the cosmos, courtesy of a collaboration of almost 300 different organizations, and three decades of planning, construction, and implementation. It's beautiful. But the moment was tainted due to President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, who were given the honor of unveiling the deepest view into our universe to date. The image of Galaxy Cluster SMACS 0723 was captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, and it came at a huge cost, $10 billion. Consider this paramount event meant to broadcast this monumental achievement, a first-of-a-kind photo dubbed Webb's first deep field, ushering in a new era for astronomy. The world space scientists absolutely hyped. Future space cadets and common folks alike eager to witness the first photos of thousands of galaxies and millions of stars in the best quality available. And the opening presentation was crumbles compared to the magnificence of the accomplishment. The JWST is able to study the very first stars ever created, black holes, all sorts of cosmic objects, and even the atmosphere of exoplanets hundreds of billions of light years away. Instead, the opening ceremony was led by Sleepy Creepy Joe and his deeply philosophical vice president with cringe cackle. The reveal was also their moment. Surely we should have felt that excitement from astronomers in the room as they talked their way through the first image. Jason Ryan, CNET science editor, explained that originally NASA was scheduled to introduce the first batch of five images from Webb during a press conference on the morning of July 12th. That was actually supposed to be four photos and one spectra. But 24 hours prior, the schedule is updated. The last-minute change reconfigured with NASA saying they would be revealing Webb's first image known as Webb's first deep field with the help of President Joe Biden late afternoon on Monday of July 11th. The entire ordeal was off schedule. The press conference was slated to start at 2 p.m. Pacific time. However, it officially began just after 3 p.m. As astronomers and diehard space fans patiently waited for the reveal, they amused themselves by arguing about NASA's hold music online and tinkering with images from NASA headquarters that unexpectedly revealed the image ahead of time. Perhaps the adage is correct. The early bird catches the worm. Some of those early birds noted that the time waiting and debating NASA's hold music was actually more amusing than the actual press conference itself. Vice President Harris opened the proceedings with remarks about the power of American innovation and international cooperation. And then it was over to mumbling, bumbling Biden, who said the delays were caused by his itinerary for his trip to the Middle East. The president then recounted Webb's journey from Earth to its home, one million miles from our planet. With childlike bewilderment, he said, First of all, that blows my mind. Biden then gave the floor to Bill Nelson, NASA's head administrator, who gave a short speech. Unfortunately, the short speech was a bit confusing. Nelson also stumbled over some of the image's specifics, which was quite a letdown. He held the floor for a little less than three minutes, and then the entire ordeal was over. The whole press conference was over in 11 minutes tops. Some have said that's because the briefing was moving on to the embargoed images being released tomorrow. But that's no excuse for the event that the world anticipated. Does this lack of proper ceremony warrant disappointment? Why does it even matter? Who cares how it was presented, right? We got the image, and they gave the masterpiece the name First Deep Field. Well, some astronomers were infuriated about the poor performance and organization of the reveal ceremony. Ryan Jackson of CNET commented that it's worth comparing this to a similar photo revealed by Hubble in 2004. When the Hubble Space Telescope snapped its deepest view of the universe, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, things were different. The Space Telescope Science Institute, or STSCI, which manages the Hubble and Webb Telescope, held a press conference with a host of astronomy experts. They were all able to deliver a myriad of close inspections. In both cases, it's a big moment for astronomy, a big moment for science, a big moment for humankind. Generally, a whole host of excellent science communicators should explain the results. For the reveal of Hubble's ultra-deep field, NASA availed a high-level view of the history of the universe with a PowerPoint presentation with Cosmic Sans font. But it was still more substantial than the presentation we got from the White House and NASA on June 11th. Unfortunately, it was all too mundane and insincere. 
The attendees at the White House sat solo at socially distanced desks while delivering speeches about investing in the science and the spirit of American ingenuity. But they were not able to expound on the exceptional James Webb Space Telescope JWST, capabilities. Fortunately, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson was able to divulge that Webb's first deep field showed the light of galaxies bending around other galaxies, traveling for billions of years before reaching the telescope. He was quoted saying, We are looking back more than 13 billion years. He went on to explain that the other images would reach back further, to about 13.5 billion years ago. This means that we'll be observing some of the first signs of light in our universe. Nelson claimed, We are going back almost to the beginning. They also noted that the JWST, which has been three decades in the making, could revolutionize our understanding of the cosmos by providing detailed infrared images of the universe. But they did not allocate time to explain that the $10 billion telescope is not only able to observe some of the oldest galaxies in the universe with its state-of-the-art system of lenses, filters, and prisms to detect signals in the infrared spectrum. The James Webb Space Observatory is also able to peek inside the atmospheres of exoplanets. And so far, the JWST has performed flawlessly, according to Marsha Reiki, professor of astronomy at University of Arizona. And this was some of the elaborate details people were expecting. If you're really not a diehard space enthusiast, you probably didn't know that at a recent news conference, NASA's deputy senior project scientist Jonathan Gardner told the press, Webb can see backwards in time just after the Big Bang by looking for galaxies that are so far away, the light has taken many billions of years to get from those galaxies to ourselves. Webb is bigger than Hubble so that it can see fainter galaxies that are further away. But at least the conference was able to briefly explain that to the world. Unfortunately, they failed to mention another dramatic event that occurred with the JWST. The JWST was hit by a micrometeoroid. The JWST has already experienced some turbulence. A tiny rock fragment hit the new James Webb Space Telescope's main mirror. The damage inflicted by the micrometeoroid is producing a noticeable effect in the observatory's data. But NASA reports it is not expected to limit the mission's overall performance. NASA also reported that regardless of the minor inconvenience, the images wouldn't be any less stunning because of the micrometeoroid collision. Technical Deputy Project Manager at NASA's Goodard Space Flight Center, Paul Geithner, clarified, we always knew that Webb would have to weather the space environment, which includes harsh ultraviolet light and charged particles from the sun, cosmic rays from exotic sources in the galaxy, and occasional strikes by micrometeoroids within our solar system. Geithner then went on to say that, We designed and built Webb with performance margin, optical, thermal, electrical, mechanical, to ensure that it can perform its ambitious science mission even after many years in space. As procedure dictates, engineers adjusted the positioning of the affected mirror segment to eliminate the distortion. Unfortunately, they can't remove it all. We can only keep our fingers crossed for the best. But at least, all systems are still a go. The JWST still has its main targets, and the plan is underway. NASA reported that JWST has five initial cosmic targets for observation, including the Carina Nebula, a sort of celestial nursery where stars form, the nebula is about 7,600 light years away and is home to many enormous stars, several times larger than our sun. The next target is WASP 96b, discovered in 2014. It's a massive planet located nearly 1,150 light years away from Earth, mostly made up of gas. The next target is the Southern Ring Nebula. This nebula is a planetary nebula. It's also called the Eighth Birth Nebula because it looks like a figure eight when seen through telescopes. At 2,000 light years away from Earth, it has a diameter of nearly half a light year. And the last target for the JWST is Stevens Quintet, which is a group of five galaxies where four of them are locked into a cosmic dance of repeated close encounters. It is about 290 million light years away in the direction of the Pegasus constellation. As you've watched this video, you've been briefed more about JWST's first deep field photo than the information learned from the White House slash NASA reveal conference. So of course, we can completely understand why millions of fans and thousands of experts are disappointed. But don't lose hope, proper info will be covered. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe.